It might be easy to dismiss today as insignificant given that a year ago we voted for the status quo. We didn't end up changing our constitution. Some might even want to apologise for the vote that was taken. But with the dust now settling, it's easy to see that culturally the voice vote has proved to be a defining moment in modern Australia. The silent majority refusing to stay silent and finding their own voice. Joining me now, Senior Fellow at the Institute of Public Affairs, John Roskam. John, always good to see you. Um, I'll get onto this misinformation legislation in a moment, but, but let's go back to where we were 12 months ago. And at the start of the Voice campaign, everyone thought you'd be pushing the proverbial uphill. It was not it was not going to be able to be defeated. Such was the weight of opinion polls. It was. You've written a report as, as to what happened in that campaign, what's behind that no vote. What can you tell us? So, Peter, Advance and the IPA commissioned the most detailed survey of why Australians voted no. The key reason Australians rejected the voice is because they said no to the voice of division. Australians overwhelmingly voted as a matter of principle, as a matter of philosophy, that as citizens we are all equal. And what's interesting, Peter, is that's not just the view of the IPA in advance mm -hmm. poll. A survey of the Australian National University found the same result. Australians voted on principle that we are all equal, which is, of course, the argument of the no campaign, which the yes supporters never engaged with. That's a very good point because I think we had the conversation early on. I think the October before the voice was voted on last year, so this is 2022, basically saying, I just can't support this on principle. It doesn't matter if every Indigenous leader in Australia came out to support it. In principle, I can't enshrine in the Constitution anything that def you know, defines us or divides us by race. And it's interesting that that's where Australians landed. And that's where Australians landed. And what is also interesting is that the people who voted no overwhelmingly were not the well-off. They were not the well-educated. They were mainstream Australians. The people who voted yes were those in the highest income brackets, those with university degrees. But we also found from our survey that uh, a third of uh, people voted no because they were concerned about the division. Young people voted no. 55% of young males voted no. Wow. And we found that the support of big business, the support of the elites probably turned people off voting yes very significantly. And uh, for all the debates that the Yes campaign had about what difference this would make, they never explained how making us unequal mm -hmm. would improve the situation of Indigenous Australians. So if you listen to Professor Megan Davies, who was one of the co-authors uh, of the voice architecture, but particularly the Uluru Statement from the Heart, if you listen to her, the No Camp won because of Trumpian lies, and she went so far as to say that if she had in place back then Labor's current misinformation bill, the Yes camp would have won. Have a listen. We were blindsided by um, quite a lot of misinformation, including in the official pamphlet. Um, and I was on the committees that asked the government to pass an amendment to the legislation that allowed that pamphlet to be fact-checked so that every single pamphlet going out to the Australian community wasn't full of um, political lies, but that didn't happen. So I would have been shut down, you would have been shut down, advance the IPA. We already had to fight hard to get our messages out and we know from the fact-checking it was very much against the no campaign. The yes campaign hardly got fact-checked. But if these current laws are on the table, were in place... I don't think we would have got there. It would have been a lot more difficult, Peter. And the point to make is that it's misinformation to say that the voice was defeated because of misinformation. The evidence is absolutely clear. The voice was defeated as a matter of principle. One of the things that 
we found, and other surveys found this too, is that because elite opinion so supported yes, mm -hmm. because mainstream media, including, of course, the government broadcaster, supported yes, mm -hmm. it was the no campaign and advance that were able to use social media to allow mainstream Australians to talk to each other. And what Labor wants to do now is stop that. Elite media opinion in Australia is predominantly left-wing and progressive. They don't need to regulate the mainstream media. It's social media. And so there was a study at La Trobe University that demonstrated that the No campaign was far more successful in communicating that key message about equality of citizenship than the Yes campaign. And that's why Labor want this misinformation bill, because for the first time in political debate, conservatives used social media better than the left. And this is why they want it before the campaign. Exactly. How bad is it? Well, the misinformation bill is the biggest threat to freedom of speech we've seen since the 1940s. Uh, you might remember the Gillard government attempted a media regulator. Yes. This is much worse, and it's much worse for the reason that, as we were talking about, because of the views of the mainstream media, people are looking to alternatives, they are looking to new websites, they're looking to podcasts. As we talked about during the lockdowns in Melbourne, how mm -hmm. so much of the news was distributed through social media, yep. and that's what the government want to shut down. And this is why I said tonight, you know, this, this uh, awakening that ordinary Australians had with the voice and how powerful their vote is as a result if the silent majority roars. We've got to keep going, John Roskin. Thank you. Thank you.